Hello, Joel Lindstrom here, and let's talk about the sales forecasting functionality in Dynamics 365 and also what's new in 2020 Wave 1. In this video will cover setting up the forecasting feature, and in future videos we will cover how to actually create a forecast and use the forecasting functionality. So first of all, why sales forecasting? We've had opportunities in Dynamics since the beginning. And you could always get a list of opportunities that are, are projected to close with estimated close dates and statuses and stages on the process flow. So why do we need sales forecasting? Well, for one thing, uh, just a list of opportunities doesn't really tell you the whole story or doesn't accurately project what you're going to be selling because you have a lot of opportunities that may not close or might get delayed or, or might never happen. And sales forecasting is a way to more accurately project what is going to close and that's useful on multiple levels first of all sellers can track the performance against their targets and identify pipeline risks that might jeopardize their ability to hit targets so you know you need to sell x number of dollars of stuff or services or products and you can see that there's a risk to that that you're not going to hit that number and then going up a level managers can track the people on their sales teams and track their performance against their quotas and look at who needs additional training or who's killing it and then going farther up directors can use forecast trends to anticipate departmental sales and reallocate resources if necessary and organization leaders can use projected estimates to change product strategy or convey updated projections to investors. I've had customers that are, for example, manufacturing companies, and the opportunity forecast is extremely useful to them because they know what they need to manufacture before the sales happen. And so without that, you're left with shortages or you have too much of something. So sales forecasting is useful to put a sanity check on your opportunity pipeline and to try to more accurately project what's going to sell. So now let's talk about how to use how so now let's talk about how do you configure the sales forecasting functionality in Dynamics 365. So in the Sales Hub app, you have to be in the Sales Hub app. And you have to have either the forecast manager or the system administrator role in order to set up the forecast feature. In the Sales Hub app, select the area selector and go to the app settings area. In the sitemap, look under goal management for forecast configuration. Once you go there, if it isn't turned on, you'll need to turn it on. Once you turn it on, you'll see these options here. And so you then need to select a template. The two templates you have available are org chart forecast, which uses the normal user manager relationship. So the roll up on the forecast would go uh, me to my manager, to his or her manager. And then the territory forecast is if you use sales territories. I'm going to select org chart forecast as the template that I want to use. On this screen, you're going to configure the options for the forecast that you want to create. Uh, so first of all, we'll give this a name. Uh, I'll just call this Joel Lindstrom Forecast. And since I selected the, uh, since I selected that this is going to be an organization roll-up, it goes by user. If I had selected that it was going to be a territory roll-up, it would go by territory. So I want to choose which view, and there is a default opportunity forecast view where you can you can specify your criteria for what is and what is not in the forecast. I'm just going to go with that default. And then the top of the hierarchy, this determines where the rollup should end. So I'm going to choose myself. Um, say I'm the I'm the CEO or something like that. And then you'll see a preview of what that rollup would look like. If you chose territory, you would see the territory hierarchy here. But in this case, I can scroll down and see, yep, that's everything that's going to be included in this territory. And then your choice of fiscal period for scheduling. This schedules when the for what time period the forecast should cover. Uh, your choices there are monthly or quarterly and fiscal year. So uh, if I choose, uh, I want this to be a quarterly forecast. When do we want to start and number of periods? So if I wanted to be, be for the whole fiscal year, I could choose uh, more than one fiscal year. So then you have a valid from value for it. Then hit next. 
On this screen, you're specifying who has visibility for this forecast. First of all, the user security field. This determines which user can see the hierarchy at each level. By default, if you use organization, that's the user at that level. So if it was user, manager, director, etc., those users would be able to see this forecast. However, you can change that to a different field. So for example, if you want to be the people creating the, the opportunities or modifying the uh, opportunities, you can change that to one of those user fields or custom user fields too. Uh, additional security roles. Who else should be able to see the forecast? If it you just want it to be visible to the people in the hierarchy or the territories, managers, then you would choose no additional security roles. If you want everybody to be able to see it, maybe on a public dashboard, then you would say all security roles. And that will give you the notice. All users are able to see the full forecast. Only security field users can make adjustments to the forecast. Uh, so again, they can't change it, but if you want everybody to see it, you would choose all security roles. And then hit next. Then we come to the layout tab. The layout tab lets you choose which columns appear in your forecast. So by default, there are several fields here. Um, the user field is selected by default and can't be unselected. The quota field is a special field that supports quota information imported from a simple Excel template. And then the prediction is available if you have an organization forecast and if you are paying for the predictive scoring option. What you want to hit is add from option set. This lets you add the values or the columns from an option set to your forecast so you can view your forecast by those categories. Um, there's several to choose from here. Uh, the one that Microsoft recommends that you select is the forecast category. Um, that's kind of the default one. And then uh, you can choose some other ones if you want. You can then auto configure the columns, um, which will, this is probably the fastest way to set up your forecast. So once we add columns from the option set, it will create a column for each field within the option set. Now, by default, these are simple roll-up fields, simply rolling up the estimated value of the opportunity in that forecast status. But what you can do is you can customize it. So if I click on it and go configure, um, I have the choice to select different types of fields. So roll-up is just rolling up the value. Calculated is if I want to do a calculation. Say I wanted to uh, take one of these values, make best case, uh, a calculation. It'll give me the f other fields to choose from. And so I can choose, for example, committed times 0.75 or something. You know, you can do simple calculations here to make that be more accurate or to take in values and combine values into one field. Um, if you uh, choose simple, this field will be uh, will not include data automatically, but has an Excel workbook that you can import values. So if you're a sales manager that uh, brings in other calculations or other data, uh, you can still use this for your forecast. And then hierarchy related lets you pull in additional attributes from the hierarchy. So, but I'm gonna I'm gonna leave this as a simple rollup right now. Additional filters lets you. Uh, specify additional filters. So we have the view on the other screen that lets you choose, that has the opportunity forecast. But say you wanted to filter out all opportunities related to a certain customer or a certain type, you can use additional filters to further filter what you uh, have in your forecast. And then on the last screen, this is where we activate this forecast. And we also can upload quota and other static data for the forecast. So the things in the simple fields and the quota data, you can import those from an Excel spreadsheet, and then you can uh, you can be done. Uh, this is where you click to download the simple data column template. I don't have any simple data columns defined, but if I did, that would be where I would download it. So now we have set up our forecast. Once I've enabled forecasting in my environment, I can go to opportunities and I should now see a forecast field on my opportunity. Right there, forecast category, uh, which, which corresponds to the status 
values and status reasons of the opportunity entity. If you want to use your own kind of field, your own option set, you can do that. Uh, however, what you need to know is this is mapped to the status of the record. So if I say close an opportunity is won or lost, it will update the forecast category. If you want to use a custom option set, that's fine, but be aware there's this opportunity forecast category mapping process workflow. And what this does is this maps when the status changes of the, of the opportunity, it maps it to that forecast option set. And so what you want to do is if you if you create your own kind of opportunity forecast option set, uh, you'll want to either update or replace this workflow with something that updates your custom forecast field with the uh, when the status changes. So when you win it, you want to set it, or lose it, you want to set your opportunity custom status uh, forecast status field to the right value. So in this video, we've covered how to set up sales forecasts, why forecasts matter, and how to choose your forecast and set up the forecast options. In a future video, I'll talk more about how to use the forecast and maybe some of the advanced options.